All right, check it out. It's race day, Oslo half marathon. I am super excited, quite nervous. Uh, I'm running and my dad is running as well. And he's a veteran. He's been doing this race many times in his life. For 40 years. So. He's run 15 or 16 marathons mm. and lots of half marathons. And this is like the biggest race in Norway, also half marathon. We're both excited. We both have our goals. We both have our injuries. Uh, yeah, we're, sure. su we're very worried. <laughs> Uh, but it's going to be a good day regardless. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so we are uh, at the race now. Um, we're about, uh, I'm starting in about one hour and 10 minutes. Yeah, for the next half hour, I'm just gonna chill. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a warm up and then get in position and then off we go. My dad is uh, starting uh, in a later wave. We're both super excited. We both have a little bit of an injury though. Uh, I'm injured in the hamstring. I don't know if I will uh, finish this race, but I sure will try. Like all runners have injuries yeah. and bad feelings or wounds, yeah. uh, pain, pains. small pains here and there. Yeah. That's natural. Very common. It's very common. Yeah. And it's a bad sign, a bad omen is if everything is perfect. Perfect. Because they aren't. There's always something. after the race now you just saw the start and I want to take you through the race talk a little bit about my experiences what happened how I executed the race uh, how it felt and I've got lots more footage from the day itself coming up as well so let's get right into it so you saw the start um, lots of people great event great vibe uh, biggest race I've ever been in um, my second ever half marathon uh, I loved it it was Really awesome, I was super nervous leading up to it. Uh, if you saw my pre-race vlog, if you didn't, you can check it out here, some of my goals. I was nervous, uh, I had an injury potentially in my foot, so I was worried about that. But you know what, it all went really, really well. I'm uh, extremely satisfied. I ran a time of 1.33.38, which is like smack in the middle between my A goal and my B goal. So I, was, I, I knew I was like probably in like one, sub 130 shape if it was a flat race but knowing the hills i was thinking to myself probably i'm not going to be able to make that a goal my b goal though sub 135 that was attainable i felt that was realistic and that's what i did 133 38 so super happy about the result it was tough it was painful uh, but it was a lot of fun i started off and sort of uh, felt my way into whatever felt uh, naturally sustainable for me like without really thinking too much about the watch or my heart rate i was like uh, just going and feeling like what feels like the right pace and after a couple of kilometers i quickly sort of realized that you know that 415 pace that i needed to hold if i was going to do the sub 130 probably wasn't sustainable um, my heart rate was up at 190, almost from the get-go. It peaked on like 198 later in the race, which is like ridiculously high if you consider the fact that when I go to the track, I do workouts, like VO2 max workout at, a, at between 192 and 198 uh, BPM. My max heart rate is probably like 205 or maybe even as much as 210, I don't know. So I was like up there at near my max heart rate already, it's like, oh my god, I can't sustain this according to the heart rate. And you know, I wrote down to myself prior to the race, I'm not going to go above 190 until possibly later in the race. But I knew by my breathing that I was not above my lactate threshold. At least I thought so. And it turns out I was right because I finished the whole race at that intensity. Um, I, was, I was not breathing heavy. I felt like, felt strong, felt good. This is sustainable. 
So that shows that my heart rate goes quite up during a race. So the excitement of the race, the people, it sort of drives my heart rate up five beats or so like that. So that's interesting. And of course, if you want to see all the juicy details about my heart rate and my pace and read my race report, you should go over to Strava where I have a profile and you can follow me there and you can watch all my training and etc. So there's a link to Strava in the description, check that out. So I continued, the first hill was no problem. I, I was running steady, I was running good. I felt pretty good, I mean it's tough, but I felt good. Uh, and I was able to maintain like a 430 type pace per kilometer, which equates to a sub 135 half marathon. So I was, I was happy about that thinking, I'm gonna maintain this pace more or less. Uh, the race went on, I came down to the flat section of the race. Um, 10 kilometers in, I was starting to feel it. Halfway through, you know, I was like, the, there's something going on in my legs right now, uh, which is expectable. And I, I, you know, I had a bad experience at the Krokskogen Hall Marathon, which is my last half marathon. You can watch my race vlog from that here, um, uh, where I actually ran too hard for the first half. And I was worried that might happen something similar again, but I was still feeling confident that it probably wouldn't happen. I felt like I was really pacing myself well. I was able to speed up a little bit on that flat. Coming in to uh, the middle of the race where the start area and finish area is, you sort of come in there again around 13 kilometers in, and that's where Mats was waiting for me, and he filmed me as I passed him by. Uh, so check out the footage. Make it. Come on. <laughs> I was feeling good at this point, except for a little bit of a sting that I had. Uh, I struggled a little bit at the aid stations. Um, I hadn't practiced that much grabbing, you know, cups of water and drinking it on the go. So I wasn't able to get as much water in during the first two aid stations. I was still taking my sugar mix, maltodextrin and fructose that I had with me in a little pouch, taking that at each aid station. And I think uh, I took the, la the, the third squeeze uh, like 12 kilometers in, a kilometer before the next aid station and that's when the, my sting started developing. So probably too much sugar, not enough water. And, um, but then as soon as I got the water at the next aid station, and I, I, I took a moment to just stop and just, just get down some water just to really get it in. And it resolved within like a minute or two. Uh, so that was good. And I took it easy for a little while because I was really, you know, excited and it was all the people there and I was running hard and I felt like, you know, now's the hard part of the race. Like, I'm, I'm two thirds in, it's time for the hard part and there's also the hardest part in terms of the climb. It's like a crazy climb uh, going up there. So I was like, I took a moment to just slow down the pace a little bit. You can see it on the Strava file that the, my heart rate goes up a little bit around the 13k mark, which is like where all the people are and romance is. And then it goes down a little bit, my pace goes down a little bit, where I'm just telling myself, it's just me in the pavement. It's just me in the pavement. I was like almost meditating, trying to just like, um, get a hold of myself again, before attacking that last se section of the race, going up, 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 and it was uh, amazing. Lots of people cheering me on, children high-fiving me. It was fun, but it was, hard. It was hard. I was start, starting to suffer hard at this point, but I was sort of knowing, hey, this is this is going to work. I'm going to make it. I was, my, my, my average pace was showing that I was on 430 pace and climbing like up to 431, 432, and I had to stay at 430 or lower in order to go below 135. So I was worried, but I knew I was going to go downhill on the other, other side of that uh, hill because it's up the hill and then it's coming back down the same route back to the finish line. So I was struggling up that hill and then finally I was opening up on that downhill. It's not a steep downhill, well there's a little bit of a steep downhill and then there's like a, you know, like a slack downhill going into the, the finish line where I really was able to push the pace quite a lot um, and, and reel myself back in to get down to like, I don't know, 4, uh, 28 per kilometer uh, pace average or something like that. Here I am on the final stretch before the finish line. Hey, hey, hey. So there it is, 133.38, super happy about that result. Uh, I mean, it, overall, in the grand scheme of things, of course, it's not like that's like, a, whoa, like an impressive time in that sense. But for me at this point, it's certainly my personal best, certainly impressive for me at this point. But I know I, I'm, I'm gonna go further. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not only go further in distance, but I'm gonna go 
faster on that same distance as well. So I have big goals for next year. Uh, I'm going to go in faster. Not sure if I'm going to do the first exact same half marathon. Probably not. Thinking of doing a marathon as well later next year. We'll, we'll look at that as the new year comes around. We'll talk about my plans and my race goals, etc. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to lower that personal best substantially over the next few years. That's my plan. But super duper happy about that. Uh, and I feel like the fact that I was able to speed up at the end, the, the fact that I was able to, you know, keep that pace fairly consistent. My split times, my 5k split times throughout the whole race, very consistent, you know, which is one of the hallmarks of a good performance when you're able to stay consistent throughout. So I feel like I was really executing perfectly, really. Could have done a little better when it comes to the, uh, the hydration, no, but that's very difficult with the cups. Uh, getting the water in without like getting it everywhere and losing it and not being able to swallow. I was very conservative in the taper because I was worried about my injury, so I, I ran very little. I don't know if that's a good thing or if I was would be better off with a little bit more training, at least in the two weeks out type of uh, time range. Uh, who knows? Uh, we'll find out over the years as I experiment more and more with the taper and racing, etc gain more experience. I ran in the Ultra, the one 2.5 shoes. I have a review of it here. Uh, pretty uh, great shoes for, for running a half marathon, really light weight. Um, I would probably enjoy a little bit more cushioning, I think, at least in training. Um, but whether or not it was optimal for the race, I don't know. It did feel pretty optimal though. I mean, I, I, I ran a great race, so I guess it worked fine. At the finish line, there were a lot of bananas. Everyone's eating bananas at the finish line. They, they, they provide bananas there, which is just like awesome. And of course, carbohydrates. I mean, if you're, if you're running, if you, when you finish running, bananas are like the optimal um, post-run uh, snack or, or meal even. Of course, I had my own bananas with me, ripe bananas, because they weren't actually ripe, the bananas they served there. And after I finished my bananas, uh, we went down to the same place where Matt watched me pass and we were waiting for my dad to pass. We didn't know whether or not he was actually going to pass us though because right, he had an injury pre-race, uh, during the race. We weren't sure if he had uh, you know, broken down after three kilometers, but we were hoping. And uh, sure enough, he came along, uh, sort of limping a little bit with his injury but uh, he was uh, running pretty good at like 13 kilometers. Check it out. Det går akkurat. And here's the footage from him finishing uh, the race. And you know, my dad, he's a veteran. He's done a lot of half marathons in his life and this is one of the slower ones. He pushed, he pulled through despite having an injury. Um, he had some things to say about that after the race, check it out. All right, so my dad made it through. Oh, like, like this, uh, what do you call it? You call it the cramp? Uh, he had like a st the stra strain in the hamstring. But a strain, yeah, in the hamstring. But it was close like this for 21 uh, kilometers but he pushed through yeah grinding through ah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what was what was your time uh, two and a half hour two thirty fifty five yeah so that's pretty that's pretty good i mean con considering the, the fact that you had an injury it's the worst ever slowest uh, ever half marathon slowest ever but yes i did the uh, finish yeah and that was uh, fantastic yeah next year 220? 218. 218. 218. Yeah. You heard it. Yeah. It's a fantastic run, Oslo Marathon, through the, the streets of, of uh, Oslo. Uh, it's uh, amazing. Yeah. Really, really nice atmosphere. Yeah. 16,000 runners. And so that's it, really. Mads, of course, was with us uh, crewing, filming this, some of the footage, and and uh, you know, taking care of our stuff, carrying it in his backpack before and after the race, etc. So that was really cool having him with us. Uh, and I look forward to seeing him, of course, along the on, along the course and on the finish at the finish line. Overall, just an absolutely epic day at Oslo Marathon. It's a big event. It's sent live on national television here in Norway. So you know, if you're leading, if you're up front, then you'll be on live television. I'm not saying that I will ever be up front on a road marathon or half marathon. Well, who knows? Who knows? Probably not. 
uh, and I'm more geared probably towards competing eventually in the ultra marathons and the mountain and the trail running and that sort of thing. But I do like road running. I, I like the the purity of it. It's just it's just you and the road. There's there's no obstacles. It's just about running, running, bam, 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 feet going like that. Whereas in trails, there's more technical stuff and there's other variables and there's nature, which is why I actually like that more. But I do appreciate road running as well. And it was a really good day. I'm really happy about my race performance. I'm satisfied. As I said, check out my Strava uh, profile if you want to know all the details from the race as well as my training. And I also have an Instagram account where I post pictures. Oh, there's a link in the description for that as well. You should follow us on Facebook. Link in the description for that as well. And of course, subscribe to this channel and check out some of the other cool videos that we have here um, from, uh, you know, all things regarding running. Alrighty. Thanks for watching, so glad to have you with me here on this channel. Leave a comment please down below, tell me what you think about my video, about my race, about anything you want to talk about regarding running really. Let's keep going, my recovery is on, I'm having a couple of weeks now of recovery, and then it's back on to training, um, building my fitness for future races. Alright, bye now.